do take things for granted. Uh, when I so the the idea of having this event, of having this whole project come to me uh, on the night of my graduation, I always say I had a very very beautiful moment. You know, I had already started my masters, so graduation was not supposed to be something like oh, uh, uh, what what. But I had a very beautiful moment on stage when my name was called out. My family stood up, and I really thank them for coming. My uh, the, the dean, the VC, they all stood up and the crowd gave me a standing ovation. I was very humbled. Uh, and after the day was over, I was left with me. I tell you, my feet hurt on the day. <laughs> I walked and I, and I couldn't afford to go through the normal, to have a normal graduation day that anyone has because there was a lot of attention on my heart. And when I started my journey, I never did it for the attention. I never did it for Dr. Eve to feel like, ah, oh, this girl. I never did it for any of you in here to feel pity for me. I did it for me and my dad. <laughs> I did it for my dad. And you should always know that. This first degree was for him. And you know, I realized for me to be me, it hasn't been a me effort. It has been an effort of mere, mere individuals who did not know me. People who were just embraced by a story. A story that they didn't even verify if it was true. They just had a story and they were moved. And they held me. My family cannot afford $400, uh, $500 for school fees at USAID. But I never worried about school fees. I never worried about race. I never worried. You know, in my community, in my community, the community that I come from, I'm actually the person who dresses the most expensive. But I never had to worry about my wardrobe. You know, when I got there, people were all supportive. People saying, come get this money, go buy this, go buy this. And you know, on my graduation night, as I was sleeping, I was left with me. The cameras were out. People were out. I was in my little room at New Home, and I realized I had a beautiful moment, but it wasn't my effort. It was an, uh, a, a harmonized effort of people, some of them who did not even know each other. And I realized I could be that person that would make someone feel that way, somewhere. I realized I have it in me. You know, at Huruza, my teacher say I was the brightest, but I wasn't. There were a lot of bright kids at Huruza. There was Robert Makina, there was Nozibo, and there was Mukunti. And of all those people who were at Huruza, what pains me is it was me and Muku that made it out. All the others, they are still in that same cycle of poverty that continues and continues and continues. And most probably it's going to take a miracle, just as my life took a miracle for me to be here. And I could be that miracle for someone. I realized the press was on me. There was an light on mouth. Everyone, you know, I will tell you, could you testify, my friend over there, that I said, could you're going to help me with the press. People calling him out, and he said, what am I getting out of this? Of course, there are opportunities that are going to come. But why don't I try to make this not about me, just like someone did, and make it about that one kid in Uruza. You know, when we went to Uruza, we, we were talking to the kids. We asked the great ones, what do you want to be? Of course, everyone is some kind of a little dream. When you're grade one, you want to be the best job that you think is the best job. But they all had dreams, all of them. No one ever said, I know this is not on Peter. Everyone, they had a dream. So it's not because they do not have the brains. They do not have the opportunity. They walk for long distances to get to school. Sometimes they are hungry. My family here to Huruza was one of the richest. Yes, by your standards here, we are nothing. But in Huruza community, we were one of the richest. But there came a point when we had to wash seed, maize seed. My son would and you have meal now, and you cook. My son said, I cream, bread. I think, my cooking oil is a luxury. 
and then you say that person is malnutritioned, walks six over six kilometers to go to school, and they go there and they find a structure like what is a Toruta? What motivation is there? What motivation is there for that kid to get out? So I, start, I started it as a simple post in the best book. I, talk, I told it to, to many people, trying to get support from many people, but you know, many people say, well, no one will ever trust a 19 year old with money, no one will do this, do this, and blah, blah, blah. But I'm very thankful to each and every one of you. I am Cs, I'm very thankful. Each and every one of you who bought a ticket. Our sport is Dario Motu Beijing, I uh, respect uh, Mr. Tamara, thank you so much for giving us this beautiful, beautiful wristbands. Thank you, Roger Images, for taking us beautiful pictures that we're going to post on social media and get so many likes. I want to thank Kutela Creations for giving us the deco. This room looks amazing. You know, when I was thinking about it, I was like, ah, ah it's a job, you know. But when I came in here around four and I saw this deco on and I saw the, the red carpet was on, the, the chairs were beautifully decorated, I knew it wasn't a joke. It wasn't. And I was worried when people show up, it's going to be like, oh, I got a tip and you know. And I just said to myself, well, I'll say I tried, but I did more than try. I'll tell you this, from what you guys have contributed, Yes, we're not going to build five classrooms, but that was never the purpose anyway. By coming here... We are here, going to build five classes. Woo! Exactly! Woo! Exactly! What's the kind we're talking about? What are you talking about? You know, it's raining, and these kids need a block as agent, as a matter of agency. They don't have... Their parents are farmers, and they can't pray with the garbage and drought so that they can go to school, because they will not have food. But they need a block. And I'll tell you from all that you guys have contributed and the, the, the dress that you bought for parts on, <laughs> we all have contributed to getting that block. <laughs> we will start the Wurita project as soon as possible to get them a block so that by January when they open, they will have a classroom to call Kanzukana and they get in. And then we will work on building a decent. And then we will work on building a decent school for Buruza. And we will also work on other schools because this is not a matter that is peculiar to Buruza. There are other schools that are just like that, mm -hmm. where kids work from under, under trees. So we will expand our campaign. For Buruza, we will take the, full, the, the rest of next year trying to build Buruza decently. And then when we are done with Buruza, we are going to move to the next school that we find that there is need. And we do this for all the people who have potential in Zimbabwe. And because we do not choose our parents, we do not choose where we are born, we just throw it there. And sometimes, yes, your parents can afford you a decent life. Your parents can give you millions that if they, if they will care for you until the day you die. But sometimes, all your parents can do for you is send you to school. Let us help those parents, give these children a future, and break the cycle of poverty in the best way that we know, which is sending these kids to school. I want to thank you all very much for coming, and may you please not just support me, and support every little girl that has a dream that you know. I really, really am humbled by all of you coming and I, there is a saying that says, there is a destiny that makes us brothers. None of us goes his way alone. That which you throw into someone's life will find its way right back to yours. Amen. Amen. May this kindness that you have shown to the kids of Uruza find its way right back to your lives. Thank you very much. For these and other stories, visit our website www.263chat.com. Follow us on Twitter at 263chat and like our Facebook page 263chat.